So it's been a while since I uploaded any video content. Um, I thought I'd play with it some more, see what I can do. Um, I've been very inspired by a series of photographs that you may have seen, been all over the internet, of families from different countries around the world displaying what they have to eat in a week. It tells you how much it costs them and everything is laid out. So meat all laid together, bread, fruit and vegetables, all laid out so you can see exactly what they eat. And of course, as you'd expect, there's some kind of stark disparities between richer and poorer countries. But that got me thinking about what I take into my body every week in terms of medication. If you read my blog, you'll know I'm not particularly happy with my medication regime at the moment. When I was really struggling, it was fine. It was very much necessary. But now that I'm feeling better, I'm really finding it very difficult to come to terms with the level of sedation that I'm experiencing and the other side effects. Um, I was kind of reflecting on what I take in a week and how that's changed. There was a time about four years ago, four, three to four years ago actually, when I only took one pill a night and that was an antidepressant, um, a little known one that's hardly used actually called meclobamide. Um, it seemed to work for me so I took it consistently day in day out for many years before I had my last relapse but now wow how things have changed. So I'm going to start off by showing you the box, the box, in which I keep my medication. So here it is. It's pretty huge. It doesn't look as full as it usually does because I've taken some stuff out to uh, actually lay out some medication so you can see what it all looks like. But yeah, this box is necessary. So by the time you've got all the different things I've been prescribed, some are directly for my bipolar. Some are to do with the side effects caused by the original medications that were bipolar. And then there are some what we call PRN, so that's pretty much as and when medications that you take when you need them, at the point you need them. Um, so by the time you've got all of that, it fills my box. I'm just going to take you over here now and show you what I actually take. We are the whole shebang. I'm going to try and hold this phone as steady as possible so you can see what's down there, but it's not that easy. Let's zoom in a bit. So this top row here are really quite chunky pills. They're actually just a multivitamin. Now, normally I wouldn't bother with that, but my GP's recently said to me I've had a kind of borderline results around magnesium and vitamin D. So she just said, you know, why not? Just take a multivitamin and mineral supplement every day. So that's added into the mix. These guys in the middle are actually the medication for bipolar. So the top three, so that's the lozenge shape, and the cream coloured pills and the kind of brick coloured pills. They're all quetiapine, which is an atypical antipsychotic, and it's the main drug that kind of controls my moods, really. I'm currently taking a 400, a 300, and a 50 every day. Actually, that's not quite true. I'm not quite taking the whole 750 milligrams. If you follow my blog, you'll know that I've actually started to bring that down a little bit, but that's what I'm currently prescribed. 750 milligrams, which considering they started on 150 to work up to 300, is pretty high. 750 is the highest that my particular psychiatrist will prescribe in the community, although I've known people who have 800 a day. Just under that, all the kind of white chalky pills, and they are quite chalky, that's lithium carbonate, that's Priadil. And I take three of those, three 400 milligram tablets, which makes 1.2 gram dose every night. I have to take those with food, otherwise they make me feel very, very nauseous. The quetiapine, my main issue is taking it so that it gives me a kind of a window before I have to hurry off to bed. Over here, I'm not taking these out of the blister packet because I need to carry them around with me, is some diazepam. So that's a benzodiazepine, something I don't use very often, but sometimes when I'm very anxious or I feel like I'm gonna go a bit high, it's really worth just stepping in. So that's one of those PRN meds that I was mentioning, the kind of as and when. Now, on to the drugs for the side effects. So one of the things that quetiapine does is really slow down my bowel function. Sorry to be so graphic, but you know, it's a fact. So I end up having to take all this Senna in a week, so that's two tablets a night, and all of these sachets of Movacol. And I find taking Movacol 
really quite challenging it's not pleasant it always tastes kind of salty even when i try and mix it with very cold water it tastes somehow very warm so although i've been taking it for years i still struggle to get it down every night i'm ashamed to say that the little white pills i can't even remember what they're called i've literally just been switched over to them they are an anti-hypertensive because another thing that glutamine does is kind of mess with your metabolism so it makes you gain and retain weight very quickly. I've put on, I don't even know how many stone. I don't want to know how many stones since I started taking it. But it's also now given me high blood pressure for the first time in my life. I've always had low blood pressure, but now it's high. So I'm on these little pills to try and get that reading down to something more manageable and a bit safer. So that's the whole lot. All of that every week week in week out and I'm just about to go on holiday so I'll be packing all of this plus spares in case of loss or theft um, to get me through those two weeks. So when people use the phrase on meds you know she's on meds now there's just so much that's within that phrase of what it means to be a person with a mental health disability what it means to have to take vast quantities you know kind of ever vaster growing quantities of medication every day just to kind of get by it's not that they're making me tremendously happy or anything I'm just getting by and um, I know there'll be people who look at this and think she needs to come off the lot medication that much medication can't be good for you and you know I'm sure in some ways it's not good for me but it's just too soon I'm only just well enough to even consider beginning to taper the dose down by tiny tiny amounts tinkering with it just around the edges it's it's too soon and too risky to do anything major so i guess i'll be rattling around for a while longer yet um and i would some drugs i can't ever see me stopping to be honest the lithium for me from what i've read it's worth just continuing even when i'm completely asymptomatic just in the vain hope that maybe next time that I relapse it won't be so hard, I won't fall so far, it won't take so long to get back on track. I don't know. So very mixed feelings about drugs, indeed. But I'll be on them for the foreseeable. <laughs>